our Western adventures behind us, we were back in familiar territory, Southern Appalachia. The West has grandeur and scale, but these mountains, they have soul. And to breathe it all in, we have the most famous trail that there is, the AT. All right, well, welcome to the Appalachian Trail. So, this is a fun one. We're climbing out a newfound gap today. Destination, Charlie's Bunyan, which is something that anyone who's hiked the AT knows. Nice to be back in Appalachia. Nice to be back on the trail. My uh, brother did this in 2018 through hike. It's kind of cool sitting here thinking about what this was like when, when he came through and how far he had to go when he was here. Pretty wild. All right, you ready, Jenny? Yes. <sighs> Onward. So Jenny's moving a little slow this morning because uh, last night she might have been attacked. You were attacked? By bourbon. Jenny might have been overserved. I was attacked by a bourbon bear. Jenny, who would overserve you? You. Me? <laughs> you sure about that one? It's punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny overserved herself last night. And is paying the price now. But sweating it out, it'll make it all better. Positive is what? Okay, we're going uphill the whole way there. That makes oh. me feel better. Yeah? Because I'm on my way back. Oh, my head hurts so bad. <laughs> it really does. It's like. <laughs> Last night. This morning. This morning. I think. I think that I might throw up. <laughs> I think the drinks. What? Had something to make me sick last night, like a virus. A virus? You have a virus? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's that brown liquor virus. <sighs> all right, we're gonna go off camera so Jenny can throw up all over the place. And then we will return to our regularly scheduled program. Designed by New Englander Benton McKay over a hundred years ago, the AT passes through 14 states as it winds its way from Georgia to me. The trail's first through hiker, which is a person who goes from terminus to terminus in one continuous hike, was Earl Schaefer in 1948. Since then, of the roughly 4,000 people who attempt the same feat annually, it's estimated that only one in five will finish. It's with that in mind that I contemplate the thoughts that those people, including my brother, must have had as they were in this very spot. What was their inspiration? their fear? What were they fighting through? What made them take just one more of the five million steps that are needed to finish this trail? And how different did they come out on the other side? I will know one day. For now, I will settle for lunch with the wide open views on top of Charlie's Bunyan.
after getting off the trail, we found a campsite for the night, reset, and prepared ourselves to experience the second biggest religion of this area, NASCAR in Bristol, Tennessee. Bristol Motor Speedway is known as the last great Coliseum, and twice a year, drivers pit themselves against the steeply banked concrete walls and each other on this half mile track. New to NASCAR, I was struck with the passion of the crowd for the sport, for their driver of choice, and for America. All run congruently and deeply. On this particular night, Denny Hamlin, the current heel of the sport, bested all other drivers. It was clear that that was not the outcome that many were looking for. Having experienced the monsters of the track, we stopped in a little town to experience a different kind of monster, the Flatwoods Monster. So the story goes, at dusk on September 12, 1952, a group of children in rural West Virginia were startled when a fireball streaked across the sky and hit a nearby hillside. Accompanied by two adults, they approached the area and were startled when a single, large being mysteriously started floating towards them. It was said to be 12 feet tall and emanated a sickening metallic smell. Understandably frightened, the group ran for their lives. A later investigation uncovered that same metallic smell, skid marks, and trampled grass. But the monster was never spotted again. All witnesses are said to have stuck to their story for the rest of their lives. What was it? What was the truth? You're going to have to visit the museum in Sutton, West Virginia, hear the story, and judge for yourself. With tales of monsters now dancing in our heads, it was time to find camp. We rumbled down the back roads, not knowing exactly where we were going, but knowing that we would find our spot. Shortly thereafter, we found an idyllic creekside spot. So that was a good day. It was fun. Uh, exploring the back roads of Appalachia mm -hmm. with one significant stop that Jenny has wanted to stop at for a while. 
And we got the t-shirts. <laughs> we got the t-shirts to say we were there. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Who knows what it was, right? Yes, who knows? Yeah, who knows what it was. But um, so cool driving around Appalachia. Today we just were on back roads, like no destination in mm -hmm. mind, just working our way back towards Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, then come back. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Well, go back and then come back. And then come back. And then maybe back again. All right. Well, anything else, Jenny? This road is really pretty. It's called Cranberry Road. And it's in the beautiful Appalachian Mountains. And it's got a really pretty creek. Why is it called Cranberry? I think it's called Cranberry because the leaves look like cranberries on the side of the road. Okay. Cranberry side of the road. All right. So then, I guess we will see you guys. Wish us luck that we don't meet the Flatwoods monster tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Please go read about that story if you have not. <laughs> All right, see you guys. <laughs> Thank you, campsite. Thank you, campsite. Thank you for the babbling waters for keeping us asleep last night. Bubble, 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 and now bubble, I feel bubble, better. Bubble, bubble, bubble. My they, cold is gone. What were they saying? They said, go to bed. Go to sleep. <laughs> But they no thank you for no bears coming because I wanted to see a bear. We haven't seen a bear yet. Wow. I don't think there's bears. No? No. Okay. No, no bears. And uh, let's see. Yes. So thank you for the fall colors that are starting to come in. Yeah, they're beautiful. My Ricky Bobby glasses that make things look so cool as I'm driving down the back And roads. I can see myself in them. It's like my mirror. <clears throat> All right. So I think our plan now is to shove on back, shove on down the road. Go work out. Don't know when we're going to see you guys next. We'll probably be super buff. Yeah. Wicked jacked. We're gonna go drop some weights. Oh, drop some <laughs> weights. You just drop them. <laughs> All right. And then scream. <laughs> All right. Right rage. Well, we'll see you guys sometime. Bye. Bye. The Appalachian Mountains are some of the most ancient in the world, building and eroding many times over the last billion years. At times, they've rivaled the heights of the Rockies and the Alps of modern day. As you drive these dusty roads, over the gaps and through the haulers, you can feel the memory in the land. were the places that the Scots-Irish immigrated, bringing their culture and capabilities and lending much to what we currently think of as Appalachian. mountains also served as pivotal battlegrounds in the French and Indian Revolutionary and Civil Wars. Who traveled these paths and what was happening in their lives, we can only guess. As we drive these roads, and even though it's for the first time, there's a familiarity that we can't shake. Finding camp, it just felt right to cook our meal in cast iron over an open fire. We 
talk about the day, about the mountains, and listen to the forest. It's time for sleep. Tomorrow, another adventure. Before leaving southern Appalachia and pushing on to New England, we made one more stop. From July 1st through the 3rd, 1863, the blue and the gray crashed upon each other like a raging storm in this small farming town. Lee, believing that he could end this terrible war by striking a definitive blow to the Union, had invaded the North. The Union, however, intercepted and took up the high ground. For three days, the battle raged in places now immortalized. Places like Little Round Top, Devil's Den, the Wheat Field, The Bloody Angle, and countless others. The details I will leave to historians, but the experience I will attempt to share. Walking in the places that once ran red with blood, I'm struck with thoughts that cannot be articulated quickly or easily. There is pain here and death and suffering, but there is also pride and faith and bravery, bravery the likes of which is impossible to fathom. There are lessons here about who we are as a people, about who we are as a country. In modern day it's said that we are further apart than we've ever been. Walking this old battlefield reminds me of how apart we can truly get. Thankfully, we are nowhere near that place, and hopefully, we will never be again. Visit this place, listen for the lessons, reflect. Until next time, be well. <laughs>